So this question gave you lots of pictures. Um, all I did was make the pictures and I put them actually into what their chemical compounds were. Um, I personally don't like pictures and would much rather use actual numbers instead. So we have our given equations and then our desired reaction down here at the bottom. So we need to start manipulating our equations in order to reach this desired equation. So first thing, NH3 appears only once, so it has to match exactly. So it's a reactant here. We need it as a product, so we're going to have to flip it. There's also only two, and we need four. So we're going to flip N times two. So that means that we've got two N2 gases plus six H2 gases, making four NH3 three gases. And what that does to the delta H, since we flipped it, it now becomes negative. And since we times two, we also times two. 184 kilojoules. All right. So let's take a look at this second one. So we've got H2. Okay. Well, H2 doesn't help us because we don't need anything there, but these, this H2O does. Well, H2O, we want it as a reactant. It's on a product, and there's only two, whereas we need six. So we need to flip and times three. So we'll end up with six H2O gas, making three O2 gas plus six H2 gas. Delta H changes sign since we flipped, and it was times three. All right, so now let's look and make sure, let's make sure that when we add these equations together, we actually are getting the correct equation. So the six H2Os cancel out. What we have left when we add the equations together is two nitrogen gases plus six waters, making three oxygen gases and four NH3s. So that matches our desired, so we can go ahead and add up our enthalpies. So the question, now that we've kind of worked through this, is on the basis of the enthalpy change, is this a useful reaction for synthesizing ammonia? Well, no. This is super endothermic meaning it's going to require quite a bit of 